This poem comes with a story about the guy who more than any other influenced me in the direction of becoming a revolutionary communist, Santa Claus. The guy dresses entirely in red. In particular, it's about one scene in one movie that changed my life. Miracle on 34th Street, the original version with John Payne, Maureen O'Hara, Natalie Wood as the little girl, Edmund Gwen as Santa Claus, and don't worry, I'm not going to tell you the plot of the whole movie. Just one scene. In this scene, Santa Claus has come to New York, and for some reason he's taken a job at Macy's department store as the department Santa Claus. And the kids are, he's sitting on his throne, I guess you'd call it, and the kids are coming up and sitting on his lap and telling him what they want for Christmas. And you can see that the next mother, as we think, and her child, that the mother is really anxious to come and talk to Santa first. And she rushes up to him and says, listen, I'm not her real mother, I'm only her stepmother. Her mother and father were murdered by the Nazis in Amsterdam. And she just got here, she just got off the boat and she doesn't speak a word of English. And I've tried to explain to her that you're not gonna understand what she says. But she says, no, 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 you don't understand. Santa Claus is for every little boy and girl in the world. And I'm a little girl, so of course he'll understand me. I don't know what to tell her. Her heart's already been broken. Now, of course, if this were real life, the guy would say, well, <coughs> fuck, I don't know. Uh, buy her a present. Here, buy her three. Here's a catalog. But it isn't real life. It's a movie. And in this movie, it's the real Santa. So he says to the mother, don't worry. And then he turns to the little girl and says, well, I don't know what he says, because it's in Dutch. And her eyes light up, and she runs and jumps on his lap, and they sing a song about Sinterklaas. And when I saw this, I was the same age as the little girl. I didn't know anything about the world. But I knew that's the way it should be. That whenever you went on a long trip, no matter how long and hard, especially if it was long and hard, the first words you should hear when you get there were, welcome home. So I've been trying to write a poem or a song that would express this pretty much all my life. And a while ago, I came up with this, which it gets probably as close as I'll ever get. It's called, Crazy Santas Occupy the World. Imagine you were this cool old guy who loved children, truly and deeply. Loved every beat of the way they stiff little tick-tock walk and the monkey talk and the, the roar of the buzz of the whisper of the butterfly why of honey and wonder and thirsty hunger. They give you their hand with everything in it and your heart lurches into give me a place to stand and I will move the universe, squeeze it down into the perfect toy to light the smile inside your eye would give you anything. Imagine this multiplied by every newborn smile in a heartbreak world. If you could be Santa for every boy and girl. Imagine a magic workshop powered by twinkle of the eye drive, quantum indecision and reindeer jive. Every elf in all 11 dimensions drugged and demented but working with manic precision. Adjust in the nick of time engine, that's why they call you Saint Nick. And in the back of the sleigh, a bag big enough to carry its weight and wishes, this is it. The delicious impossible minute when every child on the planet is given the one perfect gift that says, this is your world and you belong in it. Imagine you could do this one wonderful thing, but for the rest of the year, that was all you could do. And the toys would go out and be used up and worn out and broken, and that was good the way it should be. That was why you would build them. Toys were made to be broken, not children. But in the war-torn days of the in-between year, the names would change, but it was always King Herod's reign. And his soldiers would go from door to door with bloody swords while you all worked on through tears and horror, knowing you could never make it right, no matter how magical that one perfect night. What would you do? Would you go on working when you could only give the one magic minute? Better than nothing, and who could argue with arithmetic? Or would you go crazy with the weight of anger and grief? Would you feel responsible? Would you feel like a thief living a life so sweet full of hard work done well when so many children are living in hell? Some people can't ever get enough. Give them a minute and they want eternity. The kind who can never be happy with even a scrap of cruelty. They go crazy at the thought of one child dying a needless death. They can't rest. They've got to be moving, doing, making more than a difference. Making everything different. These are the crazy Santas who never give up. Crazy Santas mad with love. 
Crazy Santas get up at the crack of dawn, work boots on, march out into the street, onto the field, get beat, fight back, get shot at, don't stop, live life hot-wired. Crazy Santas are dangerous, but it's a dangerous world. Some people can't help fighting back whenever they see the weak attacked. They live like champions in the army that never had a chance. Some of them pick up the gun. Some of them live like saints. All of them are powered by love. All of them make mistakes. Some say we need more magic minutes. That's the best we can do. But I believe we need to reach out for eternity. We need to be crazy Santas who never give up. Crazy Santas, mad with love.